Hi everyone, I'm here to talk a bit about Amphius with some help from Louise, aka Miss Saltwater Tank. I like having her on whenever the topic of fish comes up because she's much more into the fish keeping side of the hobby, while I quite predictably am more into the coral side. Thank you for having me back. Let's get started with some facts about Anthias that you may or may not know. Okay, I'll start it up. Number one. In the background is one of the more unusual, yet brilliantly colored Anthias, the square spot. This Anthias fits into the heavyweight category, topping the charts at a whopping eight inches. Although this species is one of the biggest of its kind, Anthias are closely related to groupers, which are giants in the fish keeping world. They're both in the same family, uh, I think it's pronounced Seranidae, and they diverge at the order level. Number two, Anthias are hermaphrodites. They are born without any sex and develop into males and females depending on the position in the social hierarchy. It is in fact the males that give these fish their name, sporting a light pink square on their side, while the females display a slightly duller orange coloration with yellow stripes. But wait, lots of fish are hermaphrodites. Clownfish, for example, are hermaphrodites. So what's so special about Anthias? The interesting thing about Anthias is their sex is dependent on a sophisticated social ladder. Unlike clownfish, where the big boss is the female, the top of Anthias social order is the male. The male has to aggressively maintain their place in the social order, or else the highest ranking female would turn into a male to challenge his standing in the school. This gender transition takes approximately two to three weeks. Likewise, the highest ranking female must maintain her status by physically intimidating the lower ranking females. The chain goes down all the way to the lowest ranking female that unfortunately faces the abuse from all other Antheas. Number three. In the wild, Anthias are found in a huge depth range from shallow reefs to very deep on the reef face. The square spot in particular are found at depths of up to 600 meters. That's about 1800 feet for my Burmese and Liberian viewers. At these depths, they experience much lower light levels than the average reef tank, so subdued lighting is advised to replicate their natural habitat. This male Anthias you see here has muted coloration due in large part to the amount of light in this tank needed to grow SPS. Number four, more isn't always better. In theory, it is possible to keep a group of these in an aquarium. However, it might not be the best idea. As previously mentioned, these fish are hermaphrodites. The few that become males have to aggressively maintain their place in the social order or else the highest ranking female will turn into a male to challenge his standing. The aggression goes down all the way to the lowest ranking female that unfortunately faces the abuse from all other Antheas. In massive schools you see in the wild, the aggression is more evenly dispersed. But what will often happen in home aquariums is the lowest ranking female dies and then the next and then the next until you are only left with one or two females and a single male. The tanks that tend to have the most success either have dozens or antheas or just a few. Number five, feeding solves a lot of problems. A varied diet fed frequently will lower this aggression but it's unlikely to completely eliminate it. Anthias in the wild constantly feed on free-swimming plankton to feed their high metabolism, and they can run into issues in home aquariums that are fed only once a day. The aquarists have to make a judgment call on whether to potentially overfeed the tank and strain the filtration, or possibly underfeed and risk the health of the Anthias. For this reason, the bigger the tank and filtration system, the better. That pretty much does it for Anthias. I hope you guys liked it. Thanks Louise for joining us again to talk about fish. She's Miss Saltwater Tank on YouTube, so if you haven't seen her channel, go take a look. She's got a huge reef tank and is starting up a jellyfish aquarium if you're into that sort of thing. Alright guys, until next time, 
happy reefing. <laughs>